Hi guys, so today I want to have a look at um, a camera comparison. Um, cameras I'm choosing are new, not by a long shot. Uh, I want to look at a older camera, an Olympus E500, and the camera on my phone, which is a Nexus 5. So neither of them are new or incredibly high spec by today's standards but they are very similarly spec between the two now the Olympus E500 is a DSLR camera and Nexus camera is a smartphone camera both have their good points and their bad points so let's crack on and have a look so I've taken a sample photo with them with various settings so I'd say let's have a quick look at those so these are my D500 pictures and these are my Nexus 5 pictures so they are of a rather geeky water bottle I've got it's a Doctor Who one got it from the Doctor Who experience in Cardiff which is a fantastic day so for my D500 I've taken a picture in auto mode and I've taken one picture without flash and one picture with flash now the Nexus 5 there are a couple more so we've got HDR off but flash we have HDR off but no flash and HDR on and another one with HDR on where I had manually selected focus point of around here so I think my first uh, thing that I'll look at will be dimensions so the Nexus 5 camera, all the photos are the same resolution, so 32, 3264 by 2488, which isn't a bad resolution at all for a photo, especially if you're going to print it. Um, one misconception that I think a lot of people have is that they think that to print a photo you have to have this huge, huge photo, this insane resolution, same size but you don't if you were to take that and shrink it down to a standard photo size it'd be absolutely fine you wouldn't see any loss in quality you could even blow it up to a canvas size and you you wouldn't spot any so that's a pretty decent resolution especially for an older camera now so let's look at the d500 so D500 is 3264 by 448, 2488, 2. The D500 is 3264 by 2448. So exactly the same resolution. So they're both 8 megapixel cameras. That's why I thought it was an interesting comparison to look at the two. But the one thing that you have probably noticed already is the file size so the Nexus pictures are averaging about one and a half meg each which isn't bad take quite a few photos given the Nexus's internal space isn't that great especially if you fill it up with lots of apps and music and things like that um, but obviously with it being a smartphone, you can use cloud services such as Google Photos, Dropbox, OneDrive, you name it, this goes on to back up your photos and you can then clear the photos off of your device and free up some much needed space. So, yeah, not a bad size. Let's look at D500. So, that's quite an increase. 4.76 meg for auto flash off and 4.76 meg for auto mode flash on so exactly the same size 
file. Four very different pictures. Now you probably are thinking, well, one's a proper camera, one's a smartphone, you can't really compare the two, can you? And to some degree, no, to some degree, yes. Um, so with my DSLR, it has a proper lens on it, and by a proper lens I mean an interchangeable lens. So it is an Olympus Digital 14 to 42 mil lens, and it does a pretty good job at kind of close to mid close objects. I'm not going to be able to get much zoom, but it will do the job for kind of general items that you might photograph a few feet away. And I think the Nexus does a good job of that as well. Anything over maybe five, six foot away, you're going to start losing some clarity with what's going on on the Nexus compared to especially compared to what you see with your eye, which is as anyone will know, is far better a camera, as it were, than most cameras, if not all cameras. But there are very different reasons and such for that. Um, great channel to watch um, to find out a bit more about that was uh, Vsauce. They did a few videos on the human eye and what frame rate it can see, what resolutions it can see. And it's really quite interesting if you wanted to know about the differences between kind of a digital camera and the human eye and how they are different and also how they're similar as well. Uh, so let's go to our next kind of information field. So f-stop. So f-stop on the Olympus camera. So for auto flash off it is 3.5 and for auto flash on it is 3.5 so let's have a look at Nexus so Nexus 5 it is 2.4 2.4 2.4 .4 and 2.4 so reasonably similar f-stop um, and if you're not quite sure on what the f-stop is, it is to do with um, aperture opening, um, so the wider the aperture opens the more light that can come through and hit the sensor and it means that you can kind of take photos quicker, so if you're getting a lot more light in you won't have to have as slow as it were, a shutter speed, kind of a quicker shutter speed. For example, if you're filming somebody running or taking a picture of somebody running, you would like, ideally, a nice wide aperture and a very quick shutter speed so that you don't get any motion blur within the picture. So, fairly similar f-stop settings. Um, next area will be exposure time. So for HDR on it was one nineteen second. So for H for the second HDR image one slash fifteen. For HDR off but no flash that goes to one twentieth and then for HDR off but flash one one hundred and fifty second a second so with a flash it won't have to have the aperture open as long to capture the information with D500 so on auto flash off 1.3 seconds and then for auto flash on that goes to 1 30th of a second so flash definitely can help to, sh to speed up how quickly um, your shutter closes but it depending on the camera and such it will 
maybe adapt that based upon how much light it's actually gotten back. Um, so the E500 I found if you go outside at night and take a photo of him with the flash on it will have a very short exposure time in comparison to with it being with the flash being off just because the flash is on. It kind of assumes that because the flash is on it won't need to keep the shutter open as long. But once again that is also using auto mode. If you're shooting at night really you want to be in manual so that you can control all of the settings to make sure that you can actually capture what you want to instead of just capture a black picture. Uh, so you've got ISO settings. So if you don't know what ISO settings are, they kind of help to increase how much or how sensitive the sensor is to light. So the lower the number, the less sensitive, higher the number, more sensitive. So once again, these are for the D500 on auto. So with the flash on, the ISO is 100, so very low sensitivity, and that makes sense as it wouldn't necessarily need to be because of the flash. But with the flash off, it also kept it 100. So for D500 in auto mode, it picked an ISO setting of 100, and it's come out with some nice pictures. A note with ISO settings is that the higher it is, the more noise you will have in an image. So, for example, if we expand this, if it was a high ISO setting, there would be lots of speckles and grain within this image that would kind of ruin how it looks. And you could do some editing to try and get rid of that noise and grain, but it can be difficult. Um, and if you're doing video especially, then you want as little noise as possible. Um, but with photo it is a lot easier to kind of help with that. So if you had Photoshop for example and there was lots of noise in an area, you could select it and either do a content aware fill or use the heel brush just to try and mask some of it really. So on the Nexus so once again ISO speed of 100 on one so that was on the HDR off but the flash on ISO of 100 but with HDR off but no flash it increased the ISO to 1216 so more sensitive to light to try and actually be able to see what it's looking at and take a picture of it so let's have a look at the HDR on so an ISO of 800, so a bit less than HDR off but no flash. And the second one had an ISO setting of 647. One thing to keep in mind though is these ISO settings are a lot unlike um, DSLR ISO settings. With ISO settings on a camera or a proper camera they will normally go up in increments so it will go maybe 100, 200. 500, 1000, 2000, 5000 um, kind of depends on manufacturers um, really but it seems that the Nexus 5 can kind of choose an in between of that and I wouldn't like to say if that is software controlled or maybe some degree of hardware control I doubt it's hardware just due to the fact that you can't necessarily fit everything you would need to in a phone chassis. <coughs> so that's kind of the more technical side of it. But let's have a look at actually the pictures themselves. So HDR on on the Nexus 5. So not a bad picture necessarily. You've got some kind of out of focus areas up at the top of the bottle here and it's kind of more in focus towards the middle. You've got some noise at the bottom here and to some degree it's not hugely 
clear. So here, for example, you've got in the shadow, you've got lots of noise, and it seems a bit kind of pixely around kind of windowsill ledge here, and I'll say around the cables and such. So it wouldn't be bad just for doing a general picture, as it were. Um, nothing kind of hugely important as a picture. Um, it'd be great. So that's with HDR on. So let's have a look at the HDR off and no flash. So once again, in the shadow, you've got an awful lot of noise. So where it's kind of tried to compensate for shadow, it's added in purples, yellows, blues, greens and obviously as you know that's not what shadows look like but in this one more of the bottle seems to be in focus so the top part is much more in focus and say the wall looks a bit better but once again you've got lots of noise all over and also the light shining through the window there is very bright so it has made that light pure white virtually which you may or may not want so not once again not a bad photo you wouldn't want to necessarily use it for kind of really high quality printing due to the fact that the shadows have kind of been coloured which isn't nice to look at so let's have a look at HDR off but with the flash so here I would say it is the clearest of them all as far as how crisp the image is so the bottle is very in focus the table, the cables, the curtain, windowsill ledge all very clear very little pixelation and no kind of coloration but the problem with using the flash though is that everything kind of looks a bit white so it has saturated it a bit and due to the surface of the bottle you've got the flash reflection there there and then you've also kind of got it on the paint from the windowsill but you don't due to the flash get the light from the window creeping through so it's got its pros and cons um, I mean with this you could for example take it into a program such as Photoshop or Lightroom and you could kind of select the wall and the windowsill kind of tone those whites down a bit you could add a warming filter um, but the colours all in all are a bit more neutral I would say in comparison to the others so I mean you could once again use this as you could print this I'd say there aren't many items within the photo that would mean that it'd turn out bad quality if you were to print it I mean the table has got some noise but I'm not quite sure if that's just due to the fact that it's black glass which can be a nightmare and kind of can have textures within it. So all in all though, I would say Nexus 5 takes some quite good photos. Nothing to write home about, and especially not now given that it is an old phone. But if you're just wanting to take photos to document your daily life or just a quick snap, then more than good enough I would say. But let's have a look at the D500. So let's have a look at it with the auto mode but the flash off. So here I would say for a start the picture is a lot warmer in colour, much more of a yellow tone to it. And these photos were taken within five minutes of each other so the lighting from outside wouldn't have changed a lot to alter that. So that would be so that would be classed as a characteristic of the camera and the settings involved but the bottle itself especially the main section and towards the bottom 
very clear and in focus towards the top not so much and towards the windowsill and a little bit towards the edges kind of loses a bit of focus there but not too bad the shadows though look like shadows there isn't any coloration with those hasn't altered or added artifacts to it which is great the table though it has picked up reflections of the wall texture on the table which is quite interesting it means that at least the table's clean but all of it is quite nice quite clear and once again you could print that wouldn't be any real problems I mean you might want to sharpen the image especially in some areas such as the top but quite a nice photo all in all next one is auto mode but with the flash on so similar to the Nexus 5 a lot crisper so all the edges of the bottle are very nice and clean edges of the table, the cables, the windowsill, the curtain all very nice clean lines with no pixelation at all and you could happily print that on something not that you necessarily would want to but hey as with the Nexus 5 though it has kind of gotten rid of that warm tone and made it very neutral which you very well may want um, it could give you a far wider range of editing so for example the bottle looks a lot better and you could tone the kind of wall colour down a bit maybe add a warming filter but all in all quite nice so despite them being quite old bits of tech in, now anyway I'd say they both do fantastic jobs of taking a picture obviously I think the D500 wins and that's there are lots of reasons for that the image sensor itself the lens the software the processing all of that is geared to that one purpose to take a photo smartphones are so broad in what they can be used for that they kind of have to aim for a middle of the road with a lot of the features and that's not manufacturers problem or their fault that is just a symptom of the nature of them if you want to take great photos have a proper camera that is the best advice I could ever give you for example if I wanted to take a photo of a lake or a landscape I might take a picture on my phone just for quick reference but if I want to really capture that scene I will use a proper camera because it will give me the scope to edit it it will give me the clarity I want and need and I feel that it will reflect the scene better than my phone and you're probably thinking well that's obvious really but more and more people are using their phones in situations that at one point would have had a camera a proper camera or even a camera person so for example some weddings now even will get rid of a proper camera person and they will just kind of say to people send us your phone pictures and that's the memories of their day now that's all well and good until you realize that no one can take a photo or especially no one can take a photo if they've had a drink and it's all blurry and they're flailing their arms around having a good time if you've got a cameraman his one job is to take photos or to film so he's focused on that and will make sure that you get photos or a video that you are happy with and you are proud of instead of 101 selfies of people that you don't really want to see
but yeah, so that was a quick comparison of two cameras, which specs wise are quite similar, um, despite how old they are now and the age difference between the two. I think they do still take very good photos, and I would do a video comparison, but the D500 can't do video. It is purely a stills camera, which is quite rare to find now, and as I said, the D500 is getting on a bit, it's a few years old, but as you can see, it takes some very good photos. Um, I have got a newer camera, I've got a E3300, a Nikon as well, and there is once again a difference between D500 pictures and pictures from E3300. The resolution's different, quality I would say is better, the colours, how they process things, but I might cover that in a future video. So that's that was a look at the cameras. I did kind of get some info up on the two as well. So, for example, the Olympus E500, that was released September, or well, it's announced on September 2005. So, it's 12 years old now, but for a 12 year old camera, it does a very good job of the one job it's got. It takes photos. Now, Nexus 5, I'm not quite sure of the age of it, but from what I know, I think it's kind of around maybe 2014, 2013, so four, four or five years now. But like I said, not a bad camera at all. So, one thing I want to try and add into these videos as well is um, suggestions. So, I've been listening to some new music lately and thought I would share it with you. Um, I use YouTube a lot for music. I think it's a fantastic platform to find new bands to listen to, new styles of music, bands in your local area that you didn't know about, all sorts. Um, and one that I happen to stumble upon are called Poets of the Fall. Now, I won't play any music because, well, that will kind of get a copyright flag against me, and I don't want that. But they are a Finnish, Finnish band, and kind of they do quite a range of styles, to be fair. So they do some kind of quite heavy rock stuff but then they've also got some which are very ballad like um, so Children of the Sun by them is kind of like a ballad, very soft song yet for example Carnival of Rust or Drama for Life is a lot more rocky um, but yeah so I'd say check them out um, if you're a fan of rock stuff and especially a fan of fantastic vocals the singer is great he can do really good kind of lower pitched stuff but he also has a fantastic high pitched singing voice and he can transition between the two so well and he makes it work um, the lyric writing is fantastic the actual music itself is really catchy and good and well put together so, yeah, I'd recommend checking out Poets of the Fall. Um, and, yeah, so cheers for listening. Hope you liked it. Let me know what you thought. And cheers.